Hello, thanks for attending this session. I'm Gao Chao working for Intel. Today I'm going to share with you a new extension to Intel VTX, the hypervisor manager the linear address translation or it's fact. So here is today's agenda. The first part is a problem statement. Basically I will explain the problem in access control and the next uh, background of the reason why HNet is uh, introduced. The second part is our introduction to HLite. I will introduce these new hardware capabilities and the uh, changes in hardware behavior. In the last part, I will describe our HLite based solution to enforce gas translation and its secure value, its impact to KVM and the gas corner. So the part one. Currently, the X control is widely used in news kernel to reduce the attack surface. For example, Linux kernel makes executable code non-writable in page table and makes data non-executable in page table. In general, page table based X control is efficient. But uh, in theory, if an attacker would uh, write would write to every memory by exploiting some kernel kind of vulnerabilities, it could override page table and uh, bypass X control enforced by page table. So to defend against attacks that override page table, we need to enforce address translation integrity. In a virtual machine, we can use EBT to write protect CR3 page table, but it leads to high performance penalty. So we introduce to address the performance issue. Okay, let's look at the two typical page table overriding attacks. One is alias mapping. For example, one virtual address is mapped to a physical page without the uh, right permission. I assume that uh, an attacker already has arbitrary memory access, so he can set up uh, alias mapping to the physical page and uh, through this uh, alias mapping memory write, writes aloud, so the attacker can modify the page's content. Maybe he can inject some shell code into this page, now when kernel try to execute code, the shell code is triggered. So another attack is a page remapping. The adversary doesn't need to modify the real page, it just copy the content to another page and modify the, the modify this page. And then the attack overrides the page table to redirect the original virtual address to the modified page. Then part two, it's not the introduction. Here is the it's not spec. You can download the spec from this link. And the goal of HLite is to enforce gas translation integrity and prevent attacks and that override page table. So here is the key idea of HLite. HLite allows VMM to specify a virtual address range, the so-called protected linear range or PLR here. For virtual address in PLR, CPU page worker performs address translations through this HLite page table. For virtual address outside PR, CPU page worker performs address translation through CR3 page table. The main benefits of HLite are security and uh, efficiency. By over by write protecting HLite page structures, the virtual address in PRR won't be redirected to other pages, so it is invulnerable to page remapping attack. 
and it's efficient compared with EPT-based paste table protection because with each light, VMM doesn't need to intercept the change to CS3 paste table. This page is about each light's change to last the paste table work. This blue box here is the latency nested page table work for a given virtual device. CPU page worker performs the first level address translation through the CS3 page table and then get a get the physical device. Then performs the EPT work to translate the get the physical address to a host of physical address and cast the mapping into TLB. With HNET enabled, the CPU workers will perform a PLR check first. If the guest virtual address is in the PLR, CPU page worker performs address translation through HNET rather than CS3 page table. So, and during on HNET work, page worker may encounter a restart bit in HNET page table entry. So in that case, page worker would restart a page worker through CS3 page table. And uh, each slide will also introduce additional check in EPT. I will introduce them later. Each slide paging structures are almost the same as I32E paging structures. It supports both the five level and the four level paging, and the bit 11 is the restart bit. Hitting this bit results in that page work restarts with CS3 page table, and during on um, HDAT work, CPU would read page 4 the exception if page worker encounters non-present entry or misconfiguration, for example, reserved bits are set in HDAT PTE. In that case, CPU sets bit 7 of page 4 to every code to indicate that uh, this page fault is on each light terminal fault. There are two new EPT control bits are introduced to track alias mapping. One is the paging write. Paging write allows CPU to update 80 bits on page even they are not readable to software well. For example, previously if a write condition is set in EPT Rest to the page and do 80 bits update if the page is used as a page table. But if the red permission is cleared on EPT entry, then both software writes and the 80 bits updates are delayed and cause EPT violation if CPU tries to do so. Paging writes introduce a new configuration. If a if the write permission is cleared but the paging write is inside in a EPT entry, then only software writes is delayed. ADB subdata are allowed. Basically, paging writes can improve efficiency if VMM needs to read only guest page table under EPT. It can reduce VM access due to ADB update and uh, Relief VMM from ADB simulation. The other bit is uh, verify paging write. Verify paging write enforces that uh, all leaf guest paging structure pages encountered during the nested work has a PW site and EPT, else, generates an EPT violation. Specifically for this page, the VPW flag is set in EPT entry, then CPU would verify that for all this guest paging structure page, they have paging right site under EPT. Otherwise, an EPT violation is generated. VMM can use PW and VPW flags to prevent memory access through alias mapping. For example, for guest physical memory to be protected, VMM can set VPW flag on the EPT 
and then set a PW flag for each light pitting structure page. Because of the hardware check against the VPW, this protected memory can only be accessed through each light. If an attack tries to set up alias mapping to access VPW tagged memory in CS3 page table, memory access to VPW tagged memory would cause EPT violation due to low PW flag in alias mapping. So then part three, um, example of using HLI to enforce guest translation integrity. This is the high level architecture. Here we have a VMM and a virtual machine on it. In the virtual machine, guest kernel maintains two page tables, CS3 page table and h page table. First, the guest kernel needs to identify guest pages on translations to be protected. Guest kernel yeah, here we use kernel text and raw data as an example. Guess the kernel sets up a protected translation in HLight and the right protects HLight page table under EPT. So protected translations can be redirected. These translations are mapped to some guest physical page. For these guest physical page, VMM sets VPW flag for them under EPT and the side PW flag for each light pitting structures. So if an attacker wants to set up an alias mapping to protected memory, and to access this protected memory, the alias mapping needs to have PW side and the EPT. So that the attacker needs to be able to call some help calls. So guess the kernel may decide to protect or unprotect some translations at random. In that case, guess the kernel needs to update the HLight page table. But all pages or HLight page paging structures are read protected on the EPT. So to update the HLight paging structures, guess the kernel needs to reverse read protection on related h night paging structure page, which it want to update through help call, then update h night page table, and then apply right protection on h night page table again. So as you can see, to update h night against a kernel needs to call several help calls, and then updating h night is slow, but it brings one benefit. Yeah because each light page table is read only on the EPT. To override a PTE in each light, an attacker must first invoke a help call to revolt read protection on each light page table. So what's the security value of this solution? In theory, an attacker with arbitrary memory write capability can override page table to make kernel text of really raw data readable and then override kernel text and the raw data. If this solution is deployed in Linux kernel, overriding the actual page table can't redirect the translation for kernel text and the raw data. And the override HNI page table is much harder because in most of the time HNI page table is read only on the EPT. The attacker needs to turn off HNI first or make each night the page table writable under EPT. Someone may have one question in mind. Why does kernel not just write protect CS3 page table under EPT? I think there are two reasons. Each night based solution is more efficient. It doesn't need to intercept the CS3 solution and it can use PRR and restart it in each night page table to enforce translation at a 4K page granularity. While CS3 page table write protection will impact the setup and the teardown of other normal mappings. Secondly, I think each night based solution is relatively clean because it 
doesn't need change in such a page table's management. It uses a new page table, can just focus on how to manage the new page table and doesn't need to doesn't need intrusive change to current memory management. And through our POC, we think the change site is small. We have finished the POC for this solution, and uh, this is a test module we use to demonstrate the effect of HNet's protection to guest translations. This module accepts uh, virtual drives, and uh, first is try to modify CRT page table to grant write permission, and then it write, uh, writes a zero to this virtual drive. And then in our test, we pass the start address of a kernel text to this module. Without uh, the solution, this write would succeed without any error. But with this solution, this write would cause a pit fault and a color ops. From the kernel message, here are dumps of two pair dumps of two page table. The first line is from H9 page table, and the second line is from C3 page table. We can see that the page table is writable in C3 page table because the bit one is set in PDE and the non writable in H right. So based on our POC, these may these three major changes are needed in KVM side to implement this solution. First KVM advertise a PV feature through CPU ID hypervisor leaf. Generally this feature tells guests and that guests can set H net root and the PRR through help call, and I guess also can set uh, VPW, PW, and the IO flags for guest page on the EPT. To manage these EPT flags, we can just extend the existing page tracking mechanism in KVM. And uh, as now guest is able to set EPT flags, then some EPT violations may result from guest setting. So for these EPT violation, KVM doesn't need to handle it and just reports a virtualization exception. Guest kernel also needs to make some changes to implement this solution. Guest kernel needs to manage each night page table and the EPT flags for guest page it just needs to place some hooks in set memory RO or RW APIs. These APIs are used to remove set write permissions in CH page table. Cast kernel also needs to handle page fault exception in page fault handler from the page fault error code. Kernel can know whether the page fault is on each night terminal fault or not, and if the fault address is in in the PLR, page fault handler may need to work each night page table by software well. And the guest kernel also needs to handle virtualization exception. In general, it means an attack is detected by hypervisor. Regarding our status, we finished the change on KVM gas kernel and developed some tests in KVM unit tests and verified this solution and simulator. And our plan is to send out the IFC patch in the future. And currently, we focus on protecting non-readable mappings in the future. I would like to explore the possibility of using h to enforce the integrity of non-executable mappings. So yeah, that's all I want to share. Do you have any questions?